Last night, a single bell tolled 99 times at Westminster Abbey, once a minute, to mark each year of the Duke of Edinburgh's life. This morning, flags fly at half-mast around the world to mourn the passing of a man that few can remember life without. Gun salutes will be fired in remembrance around the Commonwealth at noon today. We last saw Prince Philip leaving hospital in London a few weeks ago, frail, pale, but on his own two feet. If his imminent passing was inevitable, it came as no less of a shock. Prince Philip earned the affection of generations here in the United Kingdom, across the Commonwealth and around the world. He was the longest serving consort in history, one of the last surviving people in this country to have served in the Second World War, at Cape Matapan, where he was mentioned in dispatches for bravery, and in the invasion of Sicily, where he saved his ship by his quick thinking. And from that conflict, he took an ethic of service that he applied throughout the unprecedented changes of the post-war era. During the pandemic, the Duke of Edinburgh moved from his retirement cottage in the grounds of Sandringham Estate to be in isolation with the Queen at Windsor Castle. It was nicknamed HMS Bubble by staff. Ironically, they've probably spent more time together this past year than they had in a long time. His death will be felt most hard by his wife of 73 years. It's so sad. I don't know how the Queen is going to cope because he's been there for her throughout. You've got somebody in the background that's been supremely supportive to the Queen. And I think that's the thing that matters. Thoughts now turn to his funeral. He was not a man who would have wanted a big fuss made and the COVID pandemic would have impacted the best laid plans. Buckingham Palace has asked the public to abide by social distancing laws and suggested they donate to charity rather than lay flowers. My first reaction was uh, to think of Her Majesty the Queen and uh, to feel a deep sense of sympathy and uh, compassion for her and for the whole family at the loss of such a gigantic figure particularly in her own life, married for well over 70 years, 73 years. Prince Harry, who laid bare his rift with the family during his interview with Oprah Winfrey, is likely to attend his grandfather's funeral. Prince Philip's legacy will be in the charities he supported, especially the Duke of Edinburgh Award. He will also be remembered for his service in the Royal Navy and bravery at sea during World War II. The first sea lord has paid tribute to him this morning. His generous spirit, his delight in all aspects of the naval service, and his deep understanding of our values, standards, and ethos made him such a close friend to the service for over eight decades. And he will really be deeply missed by all of us. After the longest royal marriage in history, the Queen is now alone. Her son and heir, Prince Charles, is now the man of the family. Prince Philip, patriarch, consort and devoted husband will leave a gap in national life that might only be felt now that he's gone. Alistair Bunkle, Sky News.